Welcome back to News Weekly. My guest this week is the author of The Present as History, Critical Perspectives on Global Power. It's a collection of interviews with some of the leading minds of the world. Her name is Nermeen Sheikh. Nermeen, thank you for being here so much. I really appreciate it. Not at all. Thank you, Sami. Um, now, you've got an, a, a really surprisingly remarkable guest list on this interview book. I mean, you've got Amartya Sen here, you've got Joseph Stiglitz, you've got Shirin Abadi. Who is the diva here? Oh, did any of them have egos like, I am not talking without my latte? Uh, I'm not sure I should answer that question <laughs> because I'll incriminate myself with all of them. They were all uh, difficult in their own way, but right. all of them, bar none, worth the effort. Absolutely. Now, the thing is, you, you go through these essays and everything. And now one of the problems is, of course, the book isn't available in Pakistan right now, but hopefully it will be soon enough that everyone can read it. Um, and one of the elements that comes forward is that, you know, for example, there's these great minds. I mean, very famous people. Amartya Sen is a no, he's a Nobel laureate, he's a Nobel winner. Um, Shirin Nabadi is here, Joseph Stiglitz. And they're all saying some of the things that they've been saying for ages. They've been saying the World Bank is flawed, IMF is flawed, colonialism, Pakistan and all these countries are still suffering from its after effects. Why doesn't anyone listen to them? I just get the feeling that there's still voices in the wilderness despite being such prominent voices. Well, I think one of the... In fact, one could say that the main impetus behind putting the collection together mm -hmm. is precisely what you, what you indicate mm -hmm. here, namely that these voices are still marginal in a way that certainly I and, and others feel ought not to be. And that has to do with the larger argument of the book, which is that it is increasingly difficult to imagine uh, you know, the structure of the world being something other than what it is. Right. By which I mean, for example, it's completely accepted as uh, uh, inevitable that, you know, liberal capitalism, uh, market economies, uh, democracy, uh, in whatever flawed mm -hmm. uh, uh, or perfected state, that these are de facto the best ways of organizing societies and polities. Now, what the drawbacks of those have been are constantly uh, ignored, and one could argue increasingly ignored by the media as well, right. but increasingly in the academy and in uh, uh, mainstream policy uh, but discussions. moving away from the present as history, let's move a little bit towards the future as present. Um, um, my freezing over there, stumbling all over itself. But the basic question I want to ask is 2009. What do you see as the bigger issues that we're going to be facing in this coming year? I mean, 2008, no one could have predicted such a huge economic collapse and, and terror continued to be the center stage. Do you think we're going to see more of the same or new problems or maybe less problems? I think to a large extent, it'll be more of the same. I think one of the things that Obama is likely to do is, uh, although what precise shape it'll take is unclear, uh, focus move the focus from the war in Iraq to the war in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, the focus of the war in Afghanistan as the focus in the war on Iraq, I feel is entirely misguided. And right. if all it, that's required is moving, you know, tens of thousands or, or even over 100,000 troops from uh, U.S. troops from Iraq into Afghanistan, I don't think that's going to solve. It does seem like they, they view the world as a great big risk board game set. We just move these guys here, pile them up here, move them here, pile them up here. That's right. Yeah. Without dealing with any of the underlying uh, problems uh, in any uh, of these contexts. And I think so long as that remains the policy, these are so far as I can tell, infinite wars. And, and a war, for example, I mean, even the phrasing itself, a war on terror is absurd. And it is, in fact, uh, 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 literally an impossibility. Right. I mean, it's exactly like the war on drugs. It's not, you, you can't eradicate, or the war on poverty. It makes absolutely no sense. It's like a war on happiness or war on yeah. sadness I mean, or it's just It's, it's totally abstract. absurd. I mean, yeah. so what is it exactly that they're trying to achieve? If they mean, if by the war on terror, they mean protecting American and other frankly, European and white lives from uh, uh, former colonial people's uh, terror, mm -hmm. then that should be explained. Uh, that should be explained and they should say that by whatever means necessary, this is what they're going to accomplish. If, however, they mean that they're going to try to create a world where people will not be driven to acts of suicidal terror, right. uh, then they need to uh, take steps uh, to In do that. In that direction. That. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no indication that that's happening, the latter, that Fair is. Fair enough. Now, finally, just to wrap things up, um, great work of um, nonfiction right here. Thank you. Are you going to be working on any fiction books and we expect a South Asian story kind of coming out of you as well? or It's a possibility. Yeah? Mm -hmm. all, all possibilities are there. All right. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. 
Okay, well, I hope this book gets available in Pakistan soon enough. So that is The Present as History, Critical Perspectives on Global Power by Nermeen Sheikh. I'm going to order it off of Amazon.com or any other website until we can get it here in Pakistan. I highly recommend it. And that's it for this week's episode of News Weekly. Now, as always, send in your comments, suggestions, feedback, spare change to newsweekly at dawnnews.tv. I look forward to hearing from you. And you can see previous episodes on www.youtube.com slash newsweekly. I'm Samisha. Thank you for watching.